to this VIP webinar today, which is part of a quarterly scheme where we get some of the industry's best individuals providing some great content to our trainers. Uh, today's session is going to be covering overcoming the fear of failure, which naturally as a fitness professional is something that each and every one of us will encounter at some stage. We've got no one, I can't think of a better person than to be delivering this session today. Um, some of you will already be familiar with the work from Keith Small uh, of Your Success, um, and he's going to cover 50 to 20 minutes around overcoming the fear of failing. So with no further delay, I'm going to pass you over to Keith to take the rest of the session. Brilliant. James, thanks ever so much for the intro. Hello, everyone. Hope you're all well. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ping up a, a screen share for you um, just so we can kind of go through these bits. I know some people like to hear it. Some people like to see it. I just want to make sure that we've got all the, uh, the best mediums for communicating today. So just bear with me while we get the technology going and then we will continue. So this is always the bit that's a bit hairy is getting it to work from the beginning. And I think we're just about there, James. So the minute it comes on, I'll begin. But um, this for me is um, an area that can manifest itself or, or, or come up quite a bit with, with various people over a period of time, okay? Um, what I tend to find is there's a bit of a link. <laughs> Sometimes fear of failure can be very much linked to almost fear of success or fear of not being perfect. Um, so one of the things we're going to look at today is, is how that all revolves. And the great thing about removing any fear, whether it's something to do with business or personal, or even with your clients, is it is something you can work with. There are strategies that you can take in place. And in the nicest possible way, you can make it happen if you want to. And that's what we're really going to cover today. It's all about mindset and how you feel about things. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll go through and then as I do, James has, has always got a question or two for me afterwards when I do these presentations. No pressure here, James, but um, let's get started then if that's okay. Now, one of the things that happens for me a lot of time is when people come to me with removing fear of failure, or they have this fear of failure, it comes up in some kind of conversation during our coaching. Um, one of the things that I'll always ask them is if you knew you could only succeed, if you knew you could only be successful, what would you do today? What would you try? And the incredible shift in mindset, it's just, it's just amazing. Because all of a sudden there is a belief, well, if I couldn't fail, I'd do this, 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 and this. And a lot of the time, these are the actions that are important to getting you from where you are to where you want to be. So one of the things you can often challenge yourself with to begin with is asking, if I knew I couldn't fail, what would I do? And see how that list makes you feel and how excited you are. But there are some steps before that. So this is what we're going to talk about today. So I said, fear of failure can absolutely limit your beliefs. OK, now what happens is because you start to believe this to be true, it will hold you back in some way. So if you believe you're going to have a great day or you're going to believe you're going to do well. 99.9% .9 of the time it will. If for some reason you start thinking it's not going to be great, this is not going to go where you want it to bingo you're going to get exactly what you believe ok now the interesting thing is the belief of failure could sometimes be about you it can be about other people it could be about the world in general ok but the beliefs you hold can stop you from making different choices in your life which is why I always ask that question what could you do if you knew you could only succeed but this is the great thing fear can be released it is a thought process, it is a mindset, and are things you can do to allow yourself to move forwards. So, as I said, failure can very much be a limiting belief. Now, this fear will stop you from doing the things that help you move forward and let you achieve your goals, enjoy your life. And as a personal trainer, maybe those things that hold you back from a, a, a growing or getting more clients, increasing your earnings, helping more people, or even being able to focus in on the health and well-being that you deserve as well as your clients. Now, so that fear can stop you in your tracks before you even try. OK, so what does that look like? Because it all tends to happen on a subconscious level. So the key thing is about taking action and addressing the source of this. OK, now, very often our subconscious mind believes we need to be 
protected in some way from a previous experience or an uncertainty. So what will happen is that protection will keep us in your comfort zone or our comfort zone, if you like. So what this protection looks like is, well, if I don't try, I won't fail. So I'll stay safe and happy. Phew. But that isn't necessarily the case. And this is the bit I'm hoping resonates with you. If there is a previous experience or something you've done before, even if it wasn't in personal training, but something you've done in life that hasn't gone quite to plan for some reason, what happens is like a muscle, your subconscious will tense to protect you in some way. And then at times what happens is that tension remains and tries to keep you in a protective mode rather than letting you try again or allowing you to learn or make a new and different choice this time. So, as I said, it, it's all about being able to release. And this is what we're going to talk about today, because you can address this. Now, just to kind of give you a bit of an example, um, lots of times when I'm working with people, they see failure and success lined up like this. So there's me in the middle, failure to one side of me and success to the other side. So this is for me or for a lot of people what it takes to succeed. OK, that's what we often see but there's a little bit of a problem with this okay because what happens when you see success stacked on one side we get geared towards avoiding failure or fearing it in some way and it's like you condition yourself to think well if i work towards the things that are going to make me successful and i'm going to head towards them then all i can do is succeed but what happens is for some reason if you follow in what you feel is that path to success and it doesn't go quite to plan then all of a sudden you're, you're worried about making a mistake. You're worried about failing and you just want to toe into that protection mode. OK, so what if we saw the road to success slightly differently? What if we saw failure as a step towards success? Would you be more likely to embrace failure as an inevitable part of learning and growth? Because what it means is each time. You do something new, you try something. If it doesn't go quite to plan, and if you picture in your mind for some reason that it's a failure, great. What a wonderful opportunity to learn because maybe what I can do is something different this time. What I'm allowing myself to do is try and move forwards because each time you fear failure or each time you worry that it's not gonna be successful, what happens is you don't do anything. You stay exactly where you are. So the alternative is your fear or your belief will continue to hold you back. So see failure to begin with as a step towards success, okay? Nothing else. Give yourself the opportunity to learn and grow. Give yourself the opportunity to take a new step to success. That's what we're starting to look at and starting to move towards, yeah? Okay. Now, as I said, the biggest thing that fear of failure can do is it stops you taking action. So let's think about taking action, okay? So as I said, the biggest fear <laughs> well, the thing that can stop you is moving forwards and taking action. Action is the way to find a path to success. So what we're going to look at is taking some action right now. OK, so first, can you start to look at things differently? As I've already mentioned here. Now, usually the fear of failure is worse than the actual activity itself. And this is the thing to remember is the fear of failure is actually something that's in the future. It hasn't happened yet. And fear of failure is something that gains its strength from how we view the outcome. So as I said a moment ago, can you look at what you're doing as an opportunity to learn? Can you remind yourself there are no failures and only opportunities to learn? Every single time you take action, if it doesn't go quite to plan, brilliant, because you know now here is a path that maybe you can avoid, do differently next time, but you're not afraid of it. You embrace it as part of being successful. Okay. So remind yourself there are no failures, only opportunities to learn. What this allows you to do, and this is really important, it gives you the belief in yourself. Okay. Now, when you allow yourself to realize that when you focus on outcomes rather than failures, you can make adjustments and allow yourself to learn along the way. Be kind to yourself. See, it's an education. We all want to learn and do better, but how do I do it? By doing and then seeing what happens next. Each experience that you take will allow you to learn something new. And ultimately, this is the big thing, allows you to take another step towards a bigger goal. So if there's a failure, forgive me. See it as an opportunity to learn and, and celebrate it. Then because when you take the successful step, it motivates you to know, do you know what? I'm still on the right path. Let's keep going. Okay. 
So if you can get yourself and, and set yourself to think, I'm not going to fail, I'm going to learn, it will begin to start to free you from this fear. OK, you know, think about it when we were, you know, we were at some point um, probably had the opportunity or the, or the way of, of learning to walk. We didn't necessarily have a fear about that. We wanted to do it. OK, because we knew each time we fell over, we'd get better, we'd get stronger. And all of a sudden you're up and running. So bear that in mind. Now, one of the cool things about this, it also comes down to choice. Now, one of the things that I've learned is you always do have a choice. The choice can be as simple as, as do something or to do nothing. OK, now what's exciting with this is that every choice you make, there's an infinite number of possibilities of positive outcomes. And very often what, what happens to us is we focus in on what could go wrong rather than what could go right. And often, and generally speaking, this is the bit that I like to think about, is that the opportunity to see things go right is well worth the effort. It's more exciting to go out and do it, see what happens, take that choice. And this is something that I've always believed. This is something I'll continue to believe as well. You have and will always have the internal resources that you need. OK, now the internal resources to overcome fear of fa failures, um, it just allows you to start beginning a new journey or trying something different. OK, and everything in life that we do is a learning experience, an opportunity to grow. And the cool thing is, every time you take that opportunity to learn and grow, you, you develop, you feel stronger, you feel more motivated, more confident, and your belief begins to grow, okay? Because everything is an experience. Now, you may not get the outcome you wanted, or you may succeed. But whatever happens, in either case, we are learning something. We have the opportunity to develop new strategies to do something different next time. Yeah? Make sense? Cool. OK. Here's something else that's really important. And I'm sure you've heard this a million times over. Um, don't take things personally. OK, but what does this actually mean? Now, what this can happen and what can happen, we can tend to associate the fear or the failure, excuse me, with a bigger picture of ourselves. You may have thoughts like I'm not good enough or I'm never going to make this happen. And often you're not even aware of this. and It kind of runs on autopilot. But each time you kind of put yourself down then obviously it starts to become a belief, okay? So if you have a thought like this, stop for a minute, take a breath and listen to the words or the script that starts to run through your mind because you may find that that script is becoming personalized and really kind of putting you down. And it becomes so uncomfortable that you just start to put fears and barriers in front of every sort of aspect of your life. So as I said, don't take, things to, don't take um, these things personally, just think, what have you seen as a failure will likely have nothing to do with you as a person, okay? So can you just get past this negative coach in your head and start to become aware of these thoughts and start focusing on, on valuing who you are and not what you do, okay? This is something that's really important, which is, again, this is why I've underlined this. It's good to know failure is process, not a person. It goes back to that diagram I showed right at the beginning where failure was a step to success. But it's also good to know it's a process. It's not you as a person. OK, the way to succeed, the way to grow is to embrace the opportunities to learn through success and through failures. OK. Next thing to think about. Can you ask questions of how you see these experiences? So something that's really important to do is you can take this away and go, what did I learn from this? What is the positive or the lesson I can take from this experience I can do differently next time? How can I grow as a person? And if a similar situation were to arise again in the future, how would I handle it differently? And how would that different uh, make a difference to the outcome as well? When you start by asking those questions, you see a phenomenal change in mindset. But what you also see is an opportunity to think differently, to grow and to learn, which is what it needs to be about. And. One of the things I found, which is why I found this is um, such a great topic to talk about, is very often when I'm working with clients through one to one or, or, or group coaching, um, I have clients ask me, uh, we'll talk about a previous experience. They'll tell me about what happened and why it didn't go well in their mind. And I'll always ask them, if you had the opportunity right now to go back and tell the past you what to do differently, what advice would you give? 
this is the bit that I always enjoy. And this is the bit where the light bulbs go on for a lot of people is the advice that they give themselves or would have given themselves 10 years ago or five years ago or last month is incredible because every moment after that negative experience, they had learned a new skill or a strategy to be better equipped for the future. And that's what we can allow ourselves to do with that advice, with those strategies, with those things that you learn, you can put it into action next time or if another obstacle comes up in your way. Something else that's really important, and funny if I just come off a, a call with somebody now, they, they've got some, some great goals, but they want them to happen today. And one of the things we talked about was acceptance and being kind to yourself and taking your time. Smaller steps will take you towards your goals and they'll feel a lot more comfortable, okay? Very often the fear can come because we're looking at a large goal, we think it's going to take this long. Oh my gosh, how am I ever going to get it? So can you shift those large fear-inducing goals into smaller, gentler ones? So here's where I am. Here's what I want to get to. In this next two weeks, here's what I'm going to do. In the next four weeks, here's what I'm going to do. So you start to plan out small steps. And each time you hit that small goal, take a moment to recognize it, celebrate it, because it's all early success towards a larger goal. And if there's a failure in between, no problem. Guess why? Because we're going to learn and do something different next time or make a different choice. Okay. And remember, each time you achieve a goal, it will keep you focused and motivated to take the next step. OK, it doesn't have to be a sprint. Take your time, be kind to yourself and allow yourself to grow at a pace that's correct. Yeah. So I want to give you something to work on and put into practice. I'm going to give you four simple steps, which will take 10 minutes of your time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the, um, the document that goes with this to allow you to go through these steps is supplied to you. So if you do want to take some time and go through this, you can do it and have all the tools necessary to make it happen. OK, so let me give you these four steps. Step one, take a moment to think about how you view failure. OK, write down just in a, in a couple of sentences exactly what it is that you fear about failure. OK, so you may believe right now if I fail, others are going to judge me and I'm going to feel stupid. Yeah, could be something as simple as that. The second step. Just take a moment and reflect on what you've written and ask yourself what's more empowering to believe. So in other words, what we're saying is here, how can you view failure more positively? So maybe think about three empowering beliefs you can hold about failure. Again, write them down and pick the one that really appeals to you. So, for example, you might have a more empowering belief, which is failure gives me valuable lessons on the high road to success. OK, it could be whatever you want. But the idea is what is empowering to think about if there's some kind of failure that happens in your life. The third step, and this is the bit that you, you really can kind of focus in on. Imagine yourself through 24 hours with your new, more empowering belief. What I want you to do when you do this is notice how it changes your view of failure. It reduces your fear and just creates a positive action for you to keep moving forward. What you will notice, and I promise you this, is you feel how much more empowering your new belief is. And the fourth step. If you want to understand, you've got to act. We mentioned this a little bit earlier. Use your new belief as a powerful affirmation. So write it down, um, put it on your phone, put it on something on your wall, put it on your fridge. I don't mind. But write it down and repeat it daily. Now, if you're taking, and this is the important bit, remember to take steps towards your goals, because what you're doing is you're proving to yourself that failure is nothing to fear. It's an opportunity to learn. We hear it a lot, but it is part of the journey. So don't give up. Yeah. OK, great. And just to remember, this is about reinventing how we view failure. By looking at things differently, you take away the power of fear and instead add the resilience to grow, the vision to see opportunities for learning and growth. And as I said, failure is only as powerful as the fear that you choose to attach to it. So um, they were the key points I wanted to go through. As I said, I'll share that sheet um, so that you're able to go through those four point exercises. But um, as always, thank you for your time. And I'll, I'll hand back to James and put him under the pressure and see if he's got any questions on this one. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Keith. Um, as always, there's, uh, there's huge value in, uh, in the words there in the presentation slide. So um, on behalf of all the trainers, thank you for sharing that this afternoon. Um, I do have some questions. So 
Um, I love the quote around <laughs> no failures, just opportunities to learn. I think yeah. that is a, a key principle that we should always remember that no time is wasted mm. in an endeavor. And, and if it doesn't transcend that, you know, your interaction with a client hasn't become a, a positive one for whatever reason, mm. um, then we shouldn't, you know, beat ourselves up too much about it. That's an experience and, and you can totally. kind of feel you can kind of feel that as well. But I, I suppose in, in your kind of expert opinion as well, I, I'd assume that the ability to condition yourself to be able to bounce back quickly is quite important when it, when it comes to this aspect. Yeah, and I think this is the bit that you often find. This is something that, that I found as well, because this, this, we've all at some point had something that's, that slowed our progress, stopped us in some way. Um, and the thing that I found is often when it doesn't go quite to plan or even dreadfully or horribly wrong when you go back and do it again differently it seems to be easier smoother and you even you've probably done it about 120 times better 120 percent better i should say than you did when you first got started because you've experienced it and you've suddenly gone actually do you know what that wasn't quite the way i should deliver it but here's the way to do it now and it's so empowering um and there's so many things we, we do it all the time. I, I still get it. There's there's work that I do, and I say, oh, do I want to release that? Do I want to share that with people? Do I want to put myself out there? And I have to get over myself to go. Do you know what? Unless I do it, I'm not going to know. But what these exercises do, and what this the, the steps this presentation do, is allow you to think differently. The minute you think differently, your resilience starts to improve and increase. The fear may still be there, but you're more likely to want to be able to to deal with it and see it as progress rather than right. That's it. I'm going to stop. Yeah, that's the bit that's yeah. important absolutely and i guess the positive reinforcement comes into that as well you know because that's yeah. that's almost like a feeling emotion isn't it you you've, you know you know when something is going right yeah. and this is kind of harness that feeling yeah. um and and kind of squash the negatives uh, i guess as well but totally yeah and i think that's the, the, the thing as well is where something we talked about that muscle contracting to, to protect you not releasing because it doesn't want to have a horrible experience again when you're able to to get past that and and know that you know what there is something on the other side of it you just embrace everything and you just get to a point in your life and you think well do you know what i don't want to fail but if i have to because it gets me to where i want to be bring it on i'll take that because i will learn i'll do better um and the problems and the, the fear may still be there but i said you just get better at dealing with it and you get you feel hungrier for for learning and one of the things I've always found with, with people who are personal trainers is the need to learn and grow is constant in terms of the latest exercises, routines, diet, nutrition. But we don't always take enough time to allow us to do that for ourselves. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. And, and I suppose there's probably a, a slightly different reaction here be, between a new PT and, an, and a, a, you know, a seasoned PT. Yeah. I think for, from a new personal trainer's perspective, you know, it's all about going through the nose, going through the rejection in the early stages to, to get to the yeses. And, and as we all know, it's a numbers game, isn't it? So, yeah. you know, I know when I was, you know, PT in full time, I knew that if I went through four no's, I would get a yes yeah. <laughs> at some point. But you get better, you know, you get better Absolutely. at your delivery over, over time. And for a seasoned PT, it's probably more around the fear of losing clients. Yeah. I think, you know, when you're a successful PT, the fear mechanism changes. So... As a fitness professional, you have to make yourself irreplaceable. Um, and that is the, the fundamental factor there of, um, of kind of, you know, progressing your business. But um, no, fantastic value in there, Keith. I'm sure there's something for every type of personal trainer. Uh, so once again, many thanks for your time today. And we'll catch up again soon. It's a real pleasure. Thanks ever so much, James. Take care. All the best.